Beloved's destiny, fate, and karma are simply words that people use. And many times when we talk to each other, we have our own individual, you know, expectation, definition, maybe there's a language barrier when it comes to those words, these big, heavy, but profoundly important words, destiny, fate, and karma. Oftentimes people use them interchangeably in everyday conversation. And as you know, when we use the human design system to communicate with each other. We're using the preciseness of the language to interpret the mechanical realities under which we find ourselves bound, choiceless and helpless within the structure of this framework of reality. So in the human design system, Ra gave us key codes. He gave us keynotes. He gave us word formulas to help us understand the movie that we're watching. And these symbols, these very specific symbols are frequency representations. So the feeling behind the word, it, Ra gave us these doorways, these words to enter into. And today we're going to be focusing on three words. When we use these keynotes combined into formulas, we can decipher the body graph to help you understand the particular thematics of the whys and wherefores of this life, why you are here, why you are the way you are. And remember, you are beautiful and perfect just exactly as you are. As I find, we dive deeper and deeper into the human design system. The further and further you get down this rabbit hole of no choice, the more you come to embrace the beauty and the wonderment and the alivement and the joy, the spiritual truth that is inherent within each and every one of you, that you honor and trust uniquely and completely the sum full totality of that which you are, and that there is no way that anyone else can come into your physical space and experience the fabric of your consciousness, the reality of that which it is you experience in this life. So when you enter into the human design experiment, it allows you to come to face the truth of the inherent you-ness, and no one else can experience that truth. You get to experience it for you. And now we get into describing what we are here for, why we are here, the whole reason, the sum totality. It really boils down to three simple words. Destiny, fate, and karma can be derived and conscribed into these three simple words. It's really quite simple and really quite gorgeous. We're going to add three more words to these three simple words. Personal destiny, fixed fate, and transpersonal karma. If you read the ancient um, Indian philosophical texts, dots, not feathers, by the way, Indian, as far as the country of India, you find that uh, they used these word formulas much in the same way Ra did, where they had very short stanzas that unpacked a whole lot of information. So today we're going to unpack this information for our group benefit to help us come to grips with the meat suit, as some people like to call it, the body, and this one precious life experience that it has, and the reality of which our soul has been incarnated into, and through the combination of which the soul and the body meet to create spirit. And that spirit is derived from the frequency of the being, the spirit of peace, the spirit of success, the spirit of satisfaction, the spirit of surprise. All of these things are derived from the mechanics of your physical structure that is built on the auric frequency. At the sum totality of all existence, we are consciousness. There's a consciousness field, and that consciousness field bubbles up and creates the physical reality, the tactile reality. It's not the other way around. So in order for us to understand all of this, why are we here? Simply, it is to evolve, evolve, to love and evolve, to love and evolve, to love and evolve. If you've gone through rave cartography, this will be review. 
We're going to study deeper on our paths of personal destiny, fixed fate, and transpersonal karma by reminding you that there are these profiles. We call them our costumes or our public roles, if you're talking about the BG5 career and business language. These are generics. These are not the sum totality. But they do, when we enter into the first, first blushes of learning human design and falling in love with ourselves, they do help us and provide breadcrumbs along the path to help us recognize what is and what is not in resonance or alignment with what we truly are. So all of these people, if you look at your sun or earth on your body graph and you see that the conscious personality is a one or a two or a three, and that if it's conscious personality is a four, then the unconscious is a six. When you see that in your body graph, then you know you're on a path of personal destiny, that it is all about your own personal trip and that it is not required that you interact or interface with specific others in order to fulfill your purpose, that your slate has been wiped clean. And I'll talk more about what that means when it comes to personal destiny people at the end of our presentation. So destiny with regards to your path in life is something that is going to be very, very, very personal. And for those of you who have these profiles, here I am right here, most often, the case is, is that you've had a really challenging upbringing, really challenging upbringing. So if you're still alive and you're still here <laughs> kicking and, and walking this path with me, congratulations to you because it's not easy growing up in this time, age, space, this current reality that we find ourselves in. The personal destiny of that which is yours is here to embrace and face. There is no need to try and struggle or fight against your destiny. Accepting one's destiny means that your own personal process for you, whatever you happen to be in this life, is part of the realm that you find yourself in. So everything focused within on self. If we were a constellation or a uh, you know, a universe, it would be centric to ourselves. So centric to self, self, self. Now, when it comes to our fate, there's one profile that we have, which is fixed. When we look at the fixed fate, the four one, we have people who are hmm, in a train going down a track, and it's not to, up to anybody else to sway them or dissuade them from their track. They're on a fixed path. Now they can either bump up against the personal destiny or the fixed fate or the karma with regards to their interactions with others, the transpersonal karma. But they're like the glue that holds our profiles together. Because if you look, you can see destiny and then the fate. And then the karma, transpersonal karma. We have these people. Five, if your personality sun is a five, sun and earth is a five or a six, then you know that your life's work is about your specific interactions with specific others in this life. But that is what part of your life's work to interface with specific others, to fulfill karma, to clean up karma from past lives, from past experiences of you interfacing with you, because all there really is, is you. And we all have different perspectives and different costumes that we wear. But ultimately, everything that there is, is as Rosso poetically put it, an unborn child. We are consciousness streaming through different points and different perspectives and interfacing with each other for the self-connection fulfillment in order to evolve self-connection fulfillment. Everything that we are is about self-connection fulfillment. Never forget that this life is about self-connection fulfillment. So with regards to our evolutionary spiral, just like this DNA spiral, 
We have profiles that are about self, the personal destiny, profiles which are about connection, fixed fate, and profiles which are about fulfillment, fulfillment of transpersonal karma. But also within the structure of the hexagram, and that's where we're going to go next to um, break down and understand from a more granular space rather than big picture view. We're going to dive into the structure of the hexagram to help us understand further why there is this self connection fulfillment that is at the basis of our fundamental reality. So when you look at the energy of a gate, all of our gates have a specific frequency. And if we were to zoom into our rave mandala wheel, we would see that the evolutionary spiral moves around the wheel in this way. So we have this evolutionary framework of how we are evolving through our self-connection fulfillment. And if you take a look at what's over here on the left-hand side, you can see that we have gate seven and the lines one through six. Lines are always labeled from bottom to top. So in reality, this connection of the six line, this transition is something that is reaching towards the other hexagram, the next hexagram. It's not fully part of the hexagram itself, but it is a transition line. So because we as human beings, the way that we think of things, we have to separate into pieces to understand. We cannot necessarily see the grander big picture view and the connection. I'm doing this in this way to give you a big picture view and to show you the rave mandala wheel and its energetic flow or movement, how each and every one of us have a profile. We are all incarnate on either a right angle, personal destiny, the juxtaposition, the fixed fate, or the left angle. And that moves through this self-connection fulfillment, the evolutionary spiral of our genetic predispositions. So every one of us, our profiles come from the lines that are here within the hexagrams. It shows you how you play in your unique place and space in this path and in this destiny, how you fulfill your unique role in your own unique personal life, the costume that you wear, that you are born with, that you grow into over time. The more that you decondition and are moved correctly into this self connection fulfillment with others, the more you embody the mythology, the great play of life in the unique expression of the newness that you are here to experience and be and do and witness and watch in this life. So as with everything in human design, please do not look at, oh, six lines evolved. I want to be a six line. No, actually, all of us are needed. All of us are required within this self-connection fulfillment dance. It's simply that everything is very, very different. No one person, no one angle being better than, more evolved than the other. They're simply very different. So the right and left angles, when we look at angles of the design, are complete polarities of each other, complete opposites, if you will, self and fulfillment being part of the dance of connection within this bridge that holds all of us together in our separate meat suits, as some people like to call it. Now, I'm going to show you what's at the fundamental basis of each of these hexagrams. All we are are elemental chemistries. Here is water. At the lower trigram, this is the symbol for water. And if you look closely, you can see that water is at the foundation of each of these hexagrams, the lower trigrams, showing us the elemental chemistry. So when we look at that then and zoom back out into the big picture view of the rave mandala, we can see the water here again. And what is changing is the bottom three trigrams, which changes the elements of this mandala wheel. And the connection you can see down below now between the chemistry of these, this genetic spiral, the genetic codons, the DNA spiral, as we evolve in this never-ending spiral, 
around and around and around again. And the fourth lines, if we watch the fourth lines as they change and make their way around the wheel, the fourth lines are going to change, as you can see, not always alternating. You can see a change in the pattern. But the fourth lines is where we have an expression of what Ra calls the binary shift field or the change from the third line to the fourth line and how it is very, very hmm, fragile, we could say, when it comes to the four, because there is a fixedness. There is an, an preponderance and an easier way that people get to this place of burnout or fatigue when it comes to the fourth line, because it takes, it requires tremendous energy to externalize, a word we use for fourth line, externalize the nature of the hexagram to one's familiars to get it out into the world. So the lower trigrams are part of the fundamental basis of all of these hexagrams, the way it's organized around the wheel. And the fourth line is where we have this shifting and this moving of the information out into the world. So to give us even further illustration, one of my students in analyst training level one created this for us to take a look at the elemental I Ching and see how we are all fire and we are all water. We are all earth and mountain, wind and lake, thunder and heaven, constantly combining and recombining to create the experience of our spirit within, to evolve in our self-connection fulfillment. We are mostly water, and then we are comprised of stardust. And constantly combining and recombining, we can see the elemental frequency the thing that creates the fire within or the depths of the water. Wherever you see the water, you can see the element showing up within that chemistry. So I find it really fascinating and interesting that we can see these lines for the component structure of the trigrams that create the hexagrams that create the 64 in order for us to evolve. 